SpaceX has changed the spaceflight landscape during its two decades of existence. Not only is it again sending astronauts to orbit from American soil, but the company's also kicked off the Starship program, a new phase of space tourism, and potentially brought the settlement of Mars a step closer to reality, among other accomplishments. Starship's like a beacon of light that captures the attention of anyone, from spacefaring travelers to NASA's aeronautical agency, and notably, the Department of Defense is also not overlooking the potential benefits that Starship could bring to national security. This has been strongly demonstrated at a recent space mobility conference in Florida, where a senior official from SpaceX announced the DOD's desire to transform Starship into a government-owned asset. So what happened? Why does DOD want to own Starship so badly? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. As we know, SpaceX and the Pentagon have had positive collaborations through contracts for launching military and national security equipment using Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets. However, in recent years, the attention of this agency towards SpaceX's Starship has been increasingly emphasized. Instead of investing billions of dollars to develop its own rocket, the Defense Department aims to capitalize on SpaceX's mindset and the Starship technology behind it and to ensure that when SpaceX is ready to provide space transportation support services, the DoD is the first customer in line. In early 2022, the U.S. Air Force awarded SpaceX a $102 million five-year contract to demonstrate technologies and capabilities to transport military cargo and humanitarian aid around the world on a heavy rocket. This is the largest contract awarded to date for rocket transportation. Although the agency does not specifically mention SpaceX, the contract's terms indicate that only Starship can meet the requirements. It seems that the desire of the Air Force officials is only limited to cooperative efforts involving both parties, but in reality, they had even greater ambitions. A recent announcement suggests that the Pentagon's approached SpaceX about the possibility of utilizing Starship for sensitive and potentially hazardous missions as a government-owned, government-operated asset instead of contracting the company to launch payloads. This was announced by Gary O'Henry, a senior advisor at SpaceX, during a space mobility conference January 30th. Of course, it's entirely different from the Air Force rocket cargo mission, which aims to transport cargo from one point to another in space, as I mentioned before. We have had conversations, and it really came down to specific missions, where it's very specific and sometimes elevated risk or maybe a dangerous use case for the DoD where they're asking themselves, do we need to own a particular asset? SpaceX, can you accommodate that? Gary Henry says. We've been exploring all kinds of options to kind of deal with those questions, he says. The idea is similar to how the Air Force moves cargo. In typical situations, the Air Force might hire private carriers for cargo delivery. But for vital missions, it employs its own service aircraft, known as Greytail aircraft. In the hypothetical scenario mentioned, the military could potentially requisition a starship for a specific mission using it as a dedicated asset, then return it to SpaceX once the mission is accomplished. This approach would be akin to the military's use of specialized aircraft for crucial operations. Colonel Eric Felt, the Director of Space Architecture for the Office of the Secretary of the Air Force for Space Acquisition and Integration, says certain concepts of operation could be relevant for a government-owned, government-operated space vehicle. If we can buy the commercial service, that's what we're going to do, but there might be some use cases where there needs to be a government-owned, government-operated vehicle, and that transfer can happen on the fly, Felt says. In general, DOD's new interest in SpaceX's world's largest rocket is like a leasing transaction, in which SpaceX is not involved and it is not known what the military will use Starship as a test case with what for. This indeed poses a challenging situation for SpaceX. However, the DOD appears to have almost unlimited budgets when it comes to new toys, supporting the existing human military capabilities, perhaps not as many, so they can essentially do whatever they want. If you track the DoD's use of Starlink, you'll know they've been interested in it from the get-go. I'm sure they've also brainstormed excellent ways to leverage the Starship. The question is whether it'll be beneficial for them and the nation. Please share your thoughts in the comments section to let us know about how the DoD could use Starship if they do have full ownership. Although there's been no further announcement about the decision, to be frank, Starship has the potential to accomplish a great deal. Besides providing the U.S. military with unparalleled logistical capabilities that no other force in the world can match, Starship also serves as a secret weapon for the U.S. military. We can take an example in 2020. The U.S. Congress is looking to spend $6 billion in 2021 for a Pacific Deterrence Initiative, 
which would be funding operations in the Pacific to counter China. The general in charge of the U.S. Air Force in the Pacific would like to see some of it spent on hypersonic weapons. Hypersonic research involves maneuverable weapons or aircraft that can travel at speeds of Mach 5 or higher, and the systems designed to defeat them. It is indeed coincidental that SpaceX's Starship can achieve speeds of Mach 15 to Mach 30, and it can carry over 150 tons of payload. SpaceX has the ability to control and shut off its engines. This will enable the SpaceX spacecraft to become a supersonic platform that operates better than all the other types. Starship itself will have a range of about 8,000 miles. It'll be capable of flying back and forth multiple times day after day and will be refueled with hypersonic speed rockets. It could function like a gigantic supersonic bomber in the future. But the most important thing is the military's purpose for using Starship. If it's for defense to protect the homeland, that's natural. But using it for destructive or conflicting purposes is unacceptable. Setting this issue aside, I must emphasize that everything's still speculative. The decision-making power lies within SpaceX and Elon Musk, whether they allow the government to use their vehicle as a privilege or not. Regardless, these actions have demonstrated that SpaceX is the best choice at the moment. Here are the reasons why. The Starship is SpaceX's largest and most ambitious project to date. It's really powerful. The rocket combo can lift 150 tons of cargo in a low-Earth orbit. That's more tonnage than the U.S. Air Force C-117 Globemaster III transport. This extraordinary capacity makes the Starship the darling of the cargo hauling industry, as it'll allow you to carry as much as you want. Secondly, Starship has a large value, endowing it with the ability to hold a variety of goods of different sizes. The payload volume is a massive 1,100 meter cube, and it can lift a load of up to 18 meters in height and 9 meters in width, much more than what the other rockets are currently offering. Thirdly, reusability is a feat of Starship. It helps reduce shipping costs many times compared to competitors. Rockets have traditionally been an expensive method to transport cargo, but SpaceX accomplished a feat no previous rocket has achieved, reusing rockets quickly to make spaceflight more akin to air travel, instead of the traditional approach of discarding the rocket after launch. Musk once said it was a crazy waste, and he went against the trend by all means. With this reusability, Musk claims this ship could cost just $2 million per launch, severely undercutting the Falcon 9's $62 million price tag, a lot less than the competition is doing. And this is certainly not the final price offered because the tech mogul still has plans to lower the price even further. Finally, speed and travel time. Point-to-point -point space travel is a term that probably has become familiar. It's a form of transportation in which a rocket would launch into space and then return to another location making it hypothetically capable of bringing supplies or possibly people from one side of the Earth to the other in under an hour. And now, SpaceX's Starship can get from New York to Shanghai in under 40 minutes. What? Do you believe that? How does it do that? Yes, it's speed. You know, Starship moves at a dizzying speed of 16,770 miles an hour. That is impressive. This explains why it can cover long distances in a short time like no other vehicle. Now, for comparison, a typical commercial passenger jet flies about 500 miles per hour. This is more than enough to prove that Starship will leave all the cargo planes in the dust. And that's all for today's episode. Hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section down below. Your feedback's very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.